Hello everybody, this is SB, also known as Mr. Google, and welcome back to my latest video. This video is going to be about part 2 of building a great budget gaming PC, and in this video I will be showing you guys how to build the gaming PC I advised in my previous video. So let's start building it. At first you want to place the new motherboard on the box, open the RAM notches, slide it inwards, and you hear a click sound which indicates your RAM is in position. Please make sure you do it at the closest one near to your CPU. I think that's preferred for most motherboards but not all, so just do it anyway, so you can't do it wrong. Please be careful to not bend anything on the motherboard. Don't touch parts you don't need to touch, so please bear in mind you can ruin it if you are not at least being a little bit careful. So let's open up the CPU. This is the thing with all the pins on it. At the downside there's a little indicator or arrow, however you want to call it, which should come into the CPU socket over there, which also has the same indication. Please, before you mount it, please open up the lever down there and put the CPU in and then place the lever backwards. Your CPU should now be stuck inside the socket when you press the lever down and after that you can mount the boxed cooler on top of it with the lever over there. I will get back to that later on when I apply custom thermal paste so please keep on watching this video if you want to see me apply thermal paste to this specific CPU. But for now let's get back to the fan connector. You can twist it if you want to so it's, it stays in place a little bit better than just yeah hoovering around all your motherboard when your fans are turned on. Then place it on the CPU fan header and you're done. Another thing which can be very helpful is all of the included zip ties. There are a few zip ties included at this case and there are also some zip ties included with the power supply if you have watched my previous video you might have noticed. And at this case you also have an adapter so you can mount your 3 or 4 pin, I think it was a 3 pin fan header to your Molex connector on your power supply so they will basically always run at their maximum speed. This basically means you can add extra fans for this specific case if you want to use Molex connectors which is cables that are included on your power supply. So don't be scared if your motherboard does not support 6 or 8 fan headers you can plug them directly to your power supply so please keep that in mind. So at first we are going to start to slide in the power supply as you just have seen before. Then screw them in place with the fan facing downwards because it's going to suck in air from the downside. Then place in the screws on the four specific holes. You have to screw them a little bit loose at first. And then when you get all four screws in you screw them a little bit tighter. So you are sure it fits and it will not come loose. So please double check if everything is in the correct place, please double check any part, it's just a general tip. And afterwards please don't be scared if your PC doesn't boot up at, fir at the first time, you might have just forgotten something. It happened to me once as well and I would just forgot a simple power cable. Then we are going to move to the next part which is placing the motherboard inside of the case. Please make sure you place the I.O. panel first because most of the times if you forget this you have to place out your motherboard at first. So after your I.O. panel is in place please make sure to screw all the motherboard standoffs at their corresponding position so your motherboard does not short circuit with the case. After you have done that you can slide it in like this. Please be careful at the I.O. panel. Once it's in place, please make sure to screw in all screws you need to secure your motherboard. You can't miss them, there are little holes on top of your motherboard which go through downwards inside of the motherboard standoffs, which are a little bit of a copper color, so you can't miss them. So let's now continue to go to custom cooling paste. I had some cooling paste laying around. I messed up with my original which was stuck onto the stock box cooling. So I had to do it again. So please make sure you lay down a little bit of cooling paste in the middle. It should not be more than just a little bulb inside of the middle. Then place it upwards, kind of twist it one or two, twi once or twice and then make sure you Keep applying constant pressure so you will not mess up or get air between your cooling paste. And then move the levers on the side over the edges so you are sure you can place the boxed cooler on its 
position it's meant to you will hear a clicking sound just like that when you got it in place and then please don't forget to add your CPU fan header on top of the motherboard you can do the same for the fan which is going outwards behind your CPU if you want to do that and you can even zip tie them already a little bit I will show you how to zip tie a little bit more later on and how I did it but for now let's continue to go to the cables which come with your case all of the cases have some sort of a power connectors maybe some LED stuff and even some USB 3.0 we are not going to use USB 3.0 because this motherboard does not support it but we still have to plug in the power switch the reset switch and the frontal entrance of USB 2.0 we have a microphone entry cable and we have a headphones cable so we have to do that and I will show you guys how to do that if there's one thing which was the hardest for me when I was building a PC at the first time it should be this but if you read the manual which is included in your motherboard or uh, with the case or on a PDF document online whatever you prefer it isn't all that hard you can't honestly do anything wrong and you can't break it if you plug something in incorrectly the worst thing that can happen is your PC will not boot up one of the cables states AC97 and the other one says HD audio please make sure to use the HD audio one the other one is for very old stuff so don't care for that if you want to use the USB please plug them in down there accordingly and if you have a card reader etc etc you have to plug them in right between over there now let's get back to the fan header or the fan adapter I didn't have an extra fan for the front to plug on my motherboard so I am going to use the adapter which come with the case and then plug it into the Molex connector which I just told you a little bit earlier as you can see I have already placed one of the two hard drives over there I will be showing how to do that you can use screws or you can use the mounting clips which came with the case and then twist them right in so they are keeping or being kept in place correctly then slide it around make sure you have to plug in the other side as well line them up with the notches then carefully place in the plastic clip again make sure it's facing the correct side apply a little bit of pressure if you have to apply more pressure then you are not lining up the matches correct turn it around and it is in place as simple as that so let's continue to the next step after that make sure you can plug in the CPU power cable over there and the motherboard cable over here after that you can connect the wires from your power supply to your hard drives power them up and then afterwards use the red SATA cables I will zoom in a little bit just to show a close-up of the cables you have to connect to your hard drives you almost cannot do it wrong because there is a little edge on the connector so please make sure it's facing the right direction before you press it in your hard disk after you have done that we can go pick up our graphics card our GeForce 650 Ti from Asus with this specific case you have to place out or take out two brackets at the back of the graphics card so it will fit it's basically the exhaust of the graphics card and where you plug in your connectors to your monitor at this point we can slide in the graphics card please be careful you will not break the little edge over there on the blue side then place down two screws to hold it up there so it will not fall down after that you apply or you place in the six pin power connector and you can tuck away the remaining part of the cable a little bit and you're almost good to go so please double check everything is in place make sure you have turned on the power supply at the back and make sure all your fans are spinning so you are not going to run it hot please note that at the front of this case the shiny thing at the side of the case is plastic I haven't taken that off yet so as of now we are ready to power up the machine and start up Windows or load it or install it we have to start up press the delete button until you go into the blue BIOS screen select the boot device set it to USB place in your USB stick and start up your computer and it will basically do the same as if you would put in a Windows CD and you can install it and then you are good to go after installing some drivers for your graphics card and so on 
I will place links down in the description for all the specific parts I used in this build and maybe some extra for people who want to step up with specific cards. If you like this video please consider to share, like, comment or subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more please let me know and if you are building this PC let, please let me know what you think about it. So as always guys, thank you for watching, I will hopefully see you next time and goodbye.